Well, I do certainly hope that the sound is better now, lady. And as I said before, uh, two very big infrastructure projects are happening at the Buhu Bay area in the Namakuland of the Northern Cape. Now we're talking about multi-billion US dollar uh, investments uh, in those areas. Of course, it's the Green Hydrogen Project and the Buhu Bay Harbor. Of course, they, the plan is to everything that they uh, produce and mine, including the green hydrogen, to be exported or to, to be moved uh, from that coast through the uh, harbor, uh, the Buhu Bay Harbor. But let's talk to Hendrik Lowe. He's, of course, a man who was charged by the Northern Cape government to, 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 to basically let this, uh, to, to get this started. Hendrik, tell us, how far are we? Morning Ulrich and viewers, thank you very much. We are really well advanced. This project started in 2021 when we were at COP26 announced and I can just tell you with the leadership that we've got in the province and then furthermore with the support of ESA and Prof Ramachopa and his team, we have advanced to where we have a lighthouse investor. TNPA has issued the RFQ for the harbour construction. We're going into a RFP mid-March. I can also confirm that we will have the announcement on the harbour with via our partnership with TNPA ready. Um, the pre-feasibility study by our lighthouse investor also to be announced in May, but the preliminary outcomes, if I can give the viewers a sneak peek, looking very good. And what we've said is the Northern Cape and South Africa to investors, perfect timing. Um, we also, it strengthened the regional integration of volume. We've recently then also signed the Western Sudek Integrated Corridor. Um, this is important hosting in then the Western Cape, also combining then later on the Eastern Cape, Kubeja, specific in Nuha Development Corporation, Saldana, and then needless to say our partnership with Namibia. This partnership is just strengthening and strengthening more, um, and we are seeing a good partnership then developing with Buchuberg. Buchuber Sabai, very important in terms of harbour infrastructure, but also then a 30,000 hectares SEZ. That spatial development processes, environmental processes already underway. So I can tell you that we're also concluding a master plan. This master plan will focus on the regional integration. And with the regional integration, we will then see how we complement the SADIC business model, but also complementing the mobility and the aggregation of green hydrogen for export, but domestic market equally as well. Um, and it's not just standing there. I can tell you of the lineup of investors that we've secured and partnerships, and it really looks positive. We are advancing on a daily basis. Hendrik, you sound very excited and you've got a lot to say, but uh, the people of the Macquill and the people of the Northern Cape will be asking what's in it for us. Absolutely. For us, that is our land, our ownership and our benefit that we must arise. We've learned our lesson from mining and the extraction industry, the extractive industries. Um, the resource curse will stay with us for long. In this instance, we want to recover some of those old mining areas, generate industry. Industry that must be co-owned, joint ventured by our communities. Industries that must generate employment, that must generate future employment for our, our children, that must generate new skill sets, new businesses to be owned by our people. Uh, we are very positive about an intermediary fund that we are establishing now as well with a lot of the involved parties at this stage, investors, government parties, to optimize the benefit to our community in the Namakwa through corporate social responsibility, corporate social investment. So that central platform we will see start moving within this year, starting to look last year, I can already say some of our partners issued 10 bursaries, for instance, in the related fields. For this year, we're going to be moving into infrastructure for education. We want to look at basic infrastructure solutions in the area. We want to enhance communication and media in the area, but most importantly also enterprise development. Um, when the big storm hit us, we must be ready to compete with global competitors and stand on an equal footing. So from our side, this is what our communities must benefit from. This is really enhancement of the current uh, life quality and that is to education, to health, access to services, but most importantly to opportunities of economic benefit, either through new businesses, either by being employed, either then by having knowing that we have a good avenue for our children to be educated and employed in the near future.
How many jobs are we talking? Well, Ulrich, at this stage we're standing on 35,000 jobs. Um, so I can tell you right now it says that we're working on an avenue of kickoff in terms of 2024, um, hardcore construction starting 2025 escalating. So by 2030, 2033 max, we will be starting to see 35,000 job opportunities generated in this area. Okay, a lot of ideas. We know it's a feasibility study. You are excited. The Premier is excited. When are we going to see something happening on the ground? Absolutely. To that is the most important one. And we will foresee that by 2024, um, as we always call it, dust will fly. Remember, there's uh, several facets to the project. There's a harbour component to the project. There's a SEZ component to the project. And there's a renewable energy component to the project. There's a roads upgrade project. We're grateful to Sanral handing over the RC. 382 for their upgrade, there's electricity lines that must be upgraded, there's water pipelines to be upgraded and there's desalination. So hard infrastructure investment we definitely start seeing from 2024, um, but as a preemptor to the community in terms of corporate social responsibility by 2023 in terms of skills investment, training initiatives and then educational initiatives that will start already from this year. Indrak, just a final question. We we saw uh, a lot of people saying uh, thank you for this investment, but there's also a very vocal group within the Namakuland saying you didn't um, talk to us enough. We are concerned about mass graves within the Buhu Bay area from the Khoisan community, etc. And, uh, you know, we're not sure that this will irreparably harm this coast where we are fishing for a living. Absolutely, Ulrich. To us, the first important point there of reference is, is we're looking at a sustainable development model. I think important of the project that we generate as well, the global standard is set that it must be sustainable. In this sustainable development model, the economics will speak for itself. Um, and very importantly, though, is the social and the environmental component. A lot of consultation still to follow. A lot of desktop work has been done. A lot of on the ground, boots on the ground work has been done by myself, my team and stakeholders. I can tell you that from March this year with the master plan and the harbour announcement process, you will see us even more out there with dedicated officials and companies moving in. For us, the important part is consult, consult, communicate and include. Uh, based on community consultation, we've already declared a sacred area, if I may say, around Buchuberg. We know the grave of Captain Lynx, the origin of the Buchu Bes uh, Bossi. We know that there's caves that our communities, the Khoisan communities used to move down from, from the Orange River mouth down south. So our culture must be conserved. Our heritage sites must be conserved and declared. So I think the nice thing for us about this investment, it will bring financial resources whereby we can ring fence and conserve and then also promote our culture to, for what it is worth to us. And, and, and it's our essence, it's our basis. So definitely social, cultural, environmental integrity is the basis of this project. And that is based on extensive community consultation. Thank you very much. Hendrik Lowe is of course the acting uh, CEO of the Northern Cape um, Economic Development Agency talking about those two very massive infrastructure projects that's happening in the Macquarie, the Buhu Bay uh, area specifically. A couple of trillion um, uh, rands will be invested uh, in that area. Of course, the feasibility study currently being conducted, but as Hendrik was saying that starting next year we'll see some of the infrastructure developments already starting to happen uh, electricity roads and and other infrastructure development projects that they need uh, for those massive projects when they eventually start kicking off now lady